what you ran to the west side And though much was stolen, much still So we love a baby unconditionally, right? But the baby grows up and it's still the same person, although it's now grown up. So why should we stop loving that soul? Basically, it's a soul. The baby is a soul that grows up into a bigger human form. Why would we start judging that, that soul? Why would we stop loving it unconditionally just because it goes through different phases? So, can you love yourself as you would love a baby? Hi, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Amber and on this channel I talk about taking leadership of your own life, self-love, manifestation and mindset. I want to show you eight different ways in which you can start to love yourself a little bit more every single day. I chose this title for this video because it doesn't happen overnight. You cannot really expect yourself to go from judging yourself or self-loathing to self-love. It's a freaking journey. I know because I've been on this journey since I was 15, I think, 15, around 15. I started to dive into what is actually going on in here. <laughs> That's where it starts, becoming aware of how you think about yourself, what you deserve, what you believe, and more of that good stuff. But I will get into that pretty soon. So usually we judge someone else because of what we feel insecure about in us, in ourselves. I made a whole video about this last week. I will link it down below so you can check that out. It's about how to deal with difficult people. Because when we judge someone else, it's usually because we have a problem with something that is still not healed within us. How does this work? Well, I take the example of jealousy. When you're jealous of someone, it's usually because you think you cannot have what the other person has. Otherwise, you wouldn't care less. So it always starts in here. So what do you judge about others? What is something that you are jealous about in others? And why do you think that you cannot have it? So what I used to do is I would choose unconsciously and sometimes consciously to downplay my gifts just because other people wouldn't get triggered by me being able to do something. Because other people would tell me that they felt insecure because I was good at something or they wish they could have what I had or something like that. And I did not want to make anyone feel insecure. That's a horrible feeling. I know what it feels like when other people are doing something and you're like, Shit, I wish I could do that. I didn't want to be the person, but what happens when you hide your gifts? What happens when you start to downplay yourself? You start to become a different person. You start to become a person that other people would like you to be because that way they would not get triggered, they wouldn't get insecure. So my first point is don't hide your gifts. Don't shy away from being yourself. And investigate in which ways you are hiding yourself. Why did you ever start with hiding yourself? Because there is always an opposite reason um, why you start to do something. It gives you some sort of benefit. Otherwise, why would you start doing it? For me, it was having friends, being included in a cer certain circle that I wanted to stay in. I didn't want to be looked down upon. But in case you forgot, <laughs> when you start to change yourself to be like other people, I don't know if you know <laughs> if you ever done this, but it does not make you happy at all investigate how you are keeping yourself small for other people because it's not making you happy and self-love also starts with making yourself happy okay so the second tip that i have is to start journaling or recording in some type of way what the thoughts you have are and which you are repeating in your head so we are thinking 
almost a million thoughts. I don't know the exact amount of thoughts that a human being has in general, but it's a lot. I remember it's a lot. But the most thoughts, and this I do know, 95% of those thoughts are repeated. 95%. So what you are focused on, that is what will manifest in your life. So if you're focused on not being good enough, that is kind of what will manifest in your life as well. So I used to think thoughts like, I am not good enough to be able to do this. Uh, I don't look pretty today. Um, I feel insecure about what I said to so-and-so. Maybe they think this and this about me. Those types of thoughts were the most prominent thoughts when I paid attention to what it was that I was actually thinking about. So recognizing these thoughts and maybe investigating a little bit more into what kind of thoughts you have during the day will really, really help you see why you are manifesting certain stuff into your life and generally just how you think about yourself. So you will also know where you are on your self-love journey. So when I started, I was shocked. I did not know how bad my thoughts about myself were. I thought I was like, okay, I kind of like myself. We're like, fine, we're good. We were not good, not good at all. And I'm saying that because I'm so happy that I started paying attention to my thoughts and recognizing that, okay, I am not really that kind to myself. I am not really happy about myself because the only way we can change things is when we become aware of it. That's the first step. So if you want to start digging into this too, and I would highly, highly, highly recommend it if you want to start loving yourself more, is to, for one week, one week is doable, right? For one week, Write down the thoughts you have the most during the day. So at the end of your day, just sit with it for one to five minutes and just drop down some of the thoughts that you had during the day. And you might think, I will not remember it. You will, because now you have set your intention to do it for a whole week. And if you set your intention to think about it at the end of the day, you will come up with thoughts. I promise you, it just works that way. So try it out. So the first step is knowing, then you can change it. So the second step in this process is for every negative thought you have about yourself, write down two positive ones. Turn it around, flip the script, because the thoughts you think are repeated, right? 95% is repeated. So if you start to intentionally change those thoughts and write down something that you are comfortable with, so not something that you don't believe. Rewrite it into something that you, you know, it feels right, it feels real. That is the thought that you will replace with the negative thought. So you can replace the negative self-talk with positive self-talk if you keep intentionally change them around. So those repeated thoughts can become better thoughts. That's changing your mindset. That's changing the way you are thinking about yourself. But you can only change the way you think about yourself if you become conscious of what it is that you are thinking and then consciously change it around. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be messy. It can be lukewarm, compliments kind of thoughts. But you will get better at this when you become more comfortable thinking a different way about yourself. Because remember, the most thoughts are repeated. So it doesn't feel comfortable to go from one way of thinking to another in one day. So you can build upon it. That's fine. So the third, third <laughs> tip that I have for you is to really stand still before you make a choice. So sometimes, we are so tuned into what others would like from us or so tuned into what society expects of us that we don't really think about, that we don't really feel what we actually want when we are making choices. So this can go from really little decisions to really big decisions. 
So becoming aware of the moment you are making a choice and feeling and realizing if you're making the choice for yourself or for someone else or something else, that is really powerful to be able to tap into your own intuition, to tap into what your soul really, really wants from you. And remember, when we are making choices for ourselves, when we are shining our own light, when we don't hide ourselves, that's when we will feel better because then we're more ourselves. And when you're more yourself, you feel more free, you feel more self-love, you are happy about your decisions because it just feels good. When you follow your joy, you follow your intuition, you follow your soul. So next time you are picking out clothing, just breathe for a couple of times, tune in to your body, just feel how it feels. And without expectation, just feel where, to which item of clothing you are drawn to, to wear. So don't think about it, just feel where you are drawn to. This is a practice to really tune into what it is that you really want instead of thinking about what other people would find cool or pretty or whatever. So that's a fun ex exercise to try. So that's when you will feel when the choice is made from yourself or from your head, from your mind. Another thing you can do is to really tune into your body and feel like what it needs from you. So maybe it is a certain type of food. So we can eat food really unconsciously. We just grab something, we eat it and done. But sometimes our body really needs maybe like orange juice like vitamin c or it just needs more nutrition so maybe it needs a little bit more or maybe you can eat a little bit less if you do not tune into your body when you just eat unconsciously you're not really making the choice for yourself because is that really what your body needs so maybe you need a little bit more rest maybe you need Maybe you need a hug. Maybe you can give yourself a hug. Like those kinds of things are really easy to recognize if you make the time to tune into what it is that you need. And the only way that you will really be able to notice this is when you slow down. When you slow down and tune into your body. So feel your feet on the ground. Maybe take a couple of breaths. Just slow down and ask yourself, what do I need right now? What do I want right now? And don't expect that an answer will pop up immediately. That can happen. But if this is the first time that you're asking yourself something this way, give yourself a little bit of time because you're not used to doing it like this. So the next step I have for you is emptying your mind. So I'm a huge fan of meditation. I know not everybody is. So an alternative for meditation could be cooking or taking a walk or maybe exercising. Emptying your mind can really, really help you know yourself because our mind is filled with other people's thoughts and opinions every single day. And if you're not used to hearing your own thoughts, your own dialogue, which we spoke about earlier on in the video, it's really hard to tune into who you are, what you need, and getting to know yourself. Stillness is essential in hearing ourselves because we give our mind a break and our mind is repeating stuff other people have told us. It's our belief systems. It's the thoughts we think about ourselves, but it's not really who we are as a person. Your thoughts are not you. Your thoughts are just a mechanism that is used to solve problems. Your brain is there to solve problems for you. And it doesn't really do anything other than that. So even if you do not have any problems, your mind will create problems to solve because that's just what it does. But you are not your thoughts. You are not your brain. Just like you are not your lungs. So... Knowing yourself on a deeper level, on a soul level, is what will help you to realize who you are as a person, what you need from life, what you need from yourself, and where you want to go. And this is getting really deep because 
that is just what it comes down to. Self-love comes down to knowing yourself, knowing what you love and spending more time doing that because that is what will kind of expand this feeling of happiness of your own decisions of who you are becoming. So the next tip that I have is one that has really changed my life and that is to spend time with people that are loving on themselves too and who are positive and loving on other people as well. Because the people that you spend the most time with, it's kind of who you are becoming as well. I don't know if you've heard that before, but they say that the five people you spend the most time with is kind of who you are as a person. Of course, that's not true because I just said, we're not our thoughts, we are not other people, we are our own soul, but it really influences our world around us. It influences how we look at life, it influences how we look upon ourselves and other people. So if you have positive people around you and who support you and who uplift other people, encourage other people, that is kind of how you will feel as well. If you have people in your circle that are bringing you down, who are judging you, you will start to judge yourself and become very self-aware, self-conscious about everything that you're doing. And that's not fun at all. And that really can send in the way of loving yourself because you start to believe the things that these people say about you and about other people and about how life is. So really pay attention to the people that you invite into your space and who you spend the most time with because they influence the way you look at life and the way that you look upon yourself. And if you do not currently have people who are that uplifting and kind spirited people that you would love in your life, write about the people that you would like in your life, visualize, dream about them, and then let it go and try to just do the things that you love and to be yourself. And that way those people will find you and you will manifest them into your life. This is kind of how law of attraction works. You set your intention, you let it go, and then you just focus on doing what makes you happy. And that way, better things come to you. And I've seen this many times in my own life when I let people go. I set the intention for other people to fill those spots and they always come. They always come. And I always attract new people into my life that fit my life better at that time when I let other people go. So don't be afraid to be alone. Don't be afraid to set your intention. Don't be afraid to raise your standard with the people that you invite into your space because it's so important. It just makes everything in your life go so much easier if you have those kind of lifting people in your life. The next tip I have for you is to take yourself a little bit less serious because we can get really, really serious about how we look and how we are perceived by other people and we shouldn't be this, we shouldn't do that because that will look weird or other people will judge us, whatever. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter unless you are cruel to someone or like it is not good for your reputation if you have like a brand or whatever. Like, don't think so much about how stuff influences other people. Just have fun and be goofy and do what makes your soul happy because who cares? At the end of the day, in five years, does it still matter? In one week, will it still matter? Or it could be so much more fun if we just put our ego to the side and just focus on having fun. And sure, there is stuff you should be serious about, but in my own life, I know that I have been way too serious for my own good. And now that I've let that go a little bit more, I can tell you, like, it's possible, <laughs> first of all. Um, and second of all, it's okay to just be silly. It's okay. Like, also, find people around you that are not afraid to be silly with you. 
um, you'll see that it's okay to take life less seriously. So set that intention for goofy people as well, fun people. So the next tip I have for you is to work with your inner voice. So I just talked about knowing who you are and listening to your own body, to your own guidance. And there's a way you can really easily do this. And I have been teaching this method for two years now. And I want to invite you to learn it with me. So I am offering one-on-one -on -one coaching at the moment. And I want to show you how you can really easily tap into the portal of your own heart to listen to that soul, that soul whispers that says, I want to do more. I am ready to be myself. I'm done with hiding. I'm done with dimming my light. I'm ready to explore more of who I am. And I want to know like how to do that. If that's you, I would love to show you how you can apply for this one-on-one -on -one mentoring through the link in the comments. And if your intuition feels like it's a fit, I would love to work with you. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that it gave you some inspiration on how to get started. Let me know how it goes and which of these tips you're excited to try out. I would love to know if you have any other tips, add them as well in the comments so you can help others out as well. If this video helped you in any way, give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to the channel because there will be more content like this as well. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.